Hi everyone, my name is Wasim Jabi and I'm a reader at the Welsh School of Architecture, Cardiff University. And I am Abdurrahman Al Yamani, a PhD student working under supervision of Dr. Wasim. In this presentation, we will briefly discuss our research into graph machine learning using generative 3D topological models. This presentation is structured as follows. First, we will start with an introduction to the topic of graph machine learning and explain our aims and objectives. We will then explain the research contribution of our work. After that, we will explain the general framework and the proposed workflow. Then we will discuss the experiment we set up and its results. We'll conclude the paper with a description of the limitations of the approach, but also its promise and our plans for future work, which forms part of Abdul's PhD research. Our aim for this research project is to algorithmically and automatically recognize and classify architectural buildings and complexes. This would be useful to predict their performance or to generatively design new buildings that fit well within their context. Much of early and even current machine learning approaches focus on pattern recognition within pixel-based images. If you have used such systems, then you would know that they usually require you to lower the resolution of the image significantly and even crop it to a square format. We believe this approach peels away all the richness and depth of the available information. We wanted to search for a better and more semantically rich approach. So we focused on a branch of machine learning called graph machine learning. Very briefly on a conceptual level, graphs are made of vertices or nodes that are topologically connected through edges. Vertices and edges can be labeled and can carry additional information. Graphs are all around us. BIM models, for example, can be thought of as graphs of information and geometry. With the increase in the adoption of BIM, we expect to start seeing larger data sets of BIM models that need to be recognized and classified. To test this idea, we implemented a workflow that connected two main pieces of software. On the generative side, we use Topologic, which is a 3D modeling software library that enhances the representation of space in 3D parametric and generative modeling environments, such as Dynamo and Grasshopper. On the prediction side, we use DGCNN, which is an end-to-end -end deep graph neural network that accepts arbitrary graphs without the need to first convert them into tensors. Topologic, which is authored by a group that I headed at Cardiff University in collaboration with Robert H at UCL, represents topologies all the way from a vertex to a full 3D cluster of objects. Topologic also implements a graph class based on graph theory. DGCNN, on the other hand, as you can see here, accepts a graph as written using a specific format in a text file and then applies graph convolution layers and then sort pooling before handing the data to a regular neural network. So the workflow begins with building a synthetic data set of 1,000 cases by defining a parametric generative model of a theoretical urban block. In this block, you have three main entities, the ground, an optional podium, and one or more building blocks placed on either the podium if it exists or directly on the ground. The buildings are either towers, tall buildings, or slabs, short buildings. And after the 3D model is generated, the dual graph is derived using Topologic's method and the custom Python script is used to output the graph in the required format for DGCNN, including the node type and the overall graph classification. As you can imagine, you can have four possible graph classifications, tower on ground, tower on podium, slab on ground, or slab on podium. So the challenge for this workflow is to have the graph neural network correctly classify the urban block based on its graph representation. So we experimented with generating two 1,000 case data sets. The first data set we call three labeled classifies the nodes into ground, podium, and building. The second data set we call five labeled classifies the nodes into the same ground and podium, but then divides the building nodes into three categories based on their Z elevation, low, medium, and high. This yields five total new node cate categories. As you can see in this animation, this is a visual representation of the dual graph and a sample of the possible options and forms that you can get in the data set. We should also note that because the generation process tends to go from the simple to the complex and from low to high structures, we randomly shuffle the order of the cases in the data set before feeding it into DGCNN. I will now hand the presentation to Abdul who will explain the hyperparameters and the results of our experimental case study. 
Thank you, Wasim. To explain the experiment result, we employed the sensitivity analysis approach. We varied the following hyperparameter, training and testing division ratio, learning rate, number of epochs, batch size. In the training and testing division ratio, we experiment with using 20, 30, and 40% of the total graph as a testing data. So, for example, in the case of 20%, we divide the 1,000 graph into 800 graph for training and 200 graph for testing, and so on with the 30 and 40%. The highest accuracy, 78.66%, was achieved for five labeled data set with the 30% testing ratio. So we use this setting, 30%, to continue with our sensitivity analysis. In convolutional neural network, the learning rate is the amount by which the weights of the nodes are updated during training. We try to adjust and test different uh, learning rates to test their effect and accuracy. A steep drop on the classification resu re result was reported when we using one time 10 to the negative two for both three and five data sets, which, is, which, which was less than the acceptable rate. However, the highest prediction accuracy was, in, was res the result in the, this stage 7966 was achieved through the learning rate, one time 10 to the negative four on five labeled data set using 30% testing ratio. So there is a 1% increasing from the last stage. Therefore, we are using this setting to continue in our sensitivity analysis. The number of epochs in the neural network training is the number of complete iteration through the training data set. We tried 500, 800, and 1,000 epochs. We achieved the best classification accuracy, 84.33% by using 800 epochs for the five labeled data set, which is higher than the last two step by almost 5% exceeding of the number of epochs, the model become overfitted. So we used the, this setting to continue with our sensitivity analysis. The batch size of gradient descents in convolutional neural network control the number of training sample of iteration through the before the model internal parameters are updated. A large batch size allowed the neural network to learn faster, but CAM became less accurate. For the last experiment, we used the 1,005 labeled data set, maintained a 30% testing ratio, a one time 10 to the negative four learning rate, and 800 epochs. We experiment with the change or with the different range of batch size using 1, 10, 20, 30, and 50, and 100 batch size. Unsurprisingly, the best classification accuracy was reported for the batch size of one, but also consumes the most amount of time. Thanks, Abdul. Uh, I will now quickly cover the limitations and conclusions of this research. Uh, first, due to the lack of real data sets, we resorted to generating synthetic data sets based on parametric variation. Even if we were, obtain, if, even if we were to obtain real data sets, they may need intervention and translation work to make them amenable for dual graph extraction. We also compared the graphs with three labels to the ones with five labels and found that the latter is more effective but we don't know the effect of further increasing the number of labels, for example, for interior subdivisions, or inventing a completely different labeling scheme uh, using more complex uh, topologies. 
By using a computer with moderate power, we were limited to the amount of training and testing data that we could conduct. And finally, our workflow was tested and fine-tuned independently and was not compared to other approaches like decision trees, which may or may not be more effective. Now, in terms of conclusions, we aim to, first of all, to find out if we can classify urban form through a novel workflow that uses machine learning on three-dimensional graphs rather than on two-dimensional images. To discover the best accuracy rates, we experimented with the vertex labeling scheme, testing ratios, learning rates, number of epochs, and number of batches. The best prediction accuracy, 84.33% that we achieved, is highly competitive with accuracy results on benchmark data sets. Our approach shows strong promise for recognizing urban and architectural forms using more semantically relevant and structured data. Our planned future work will experiment with other data sets, labeling schemes, and will compare this novel workflow to other approaches. We are also planning to investigate node classification rather than just overall graph classification. This technique can be used as a fitness function within an evolutionary algorithm to generate and evaluate urban block forms that fit within a context based on a user's preference. So finally, this work is a part of my BHE dissertation under Dr. Wasim Jabi. Uh, the diagram shows the framework of implementing the machine learning algorithm with an architecture precedent database. The workflow that is published in this paper is highlighted by the red square. And thank you for your listening. Uh, thank you for listening also from me and I hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know if you have uh, any comments or questions.